Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samueli. With me today, of course, is co-founder of The Gaggle, Peter Lavelle. And we are very fortunate, once again, to welcome a good friend of The Gaggle, uh, Dmitry Babich. Uh, so welcome, Dima. Um, Thank you. And the um, issue that really we want to talk about is um, what's going on right now in Russia, which is the election. It started today, and I think it's going to go on for three days. And obviously, the way that the uh, Western media are covering it, to the extent that they're covering it at all, is that it's obvious it's a fix, a fraud, a hoax, and um, uh, it, it's it's a it's a done deal. You know, Putin will will will, will be uh, you know anointed. So we kind of want to know, um, and our gagglers want to know, is this a genuine election? Um, and if so, I mean, it's a foregone conclusion Putin will win. But if it is a genuine election, who are the other candidates and what are the issues? So, you know, they may, you know just uh, you know, t take it on. Well, first, I think it's an important event. And it's not just my opinion. I mean, look how much is written and talked about it, not only inside Russia, but in the West. I mean, OK, they can keep saying that... The, it's not important that it's a foregone conclusion that Putin will win, but they are paying attention. And a lot of people are saying uh, that the financial situation will depend. Uh, first, you know, there will be changes after the election, dramatic changes probably. Second, a lot will depend on how people vote. So why, why will a lot depend on it? Well, because I think it's a plebiscite on the yes. war. Yeah. This is the short way I would put it. If you are really... Uh, dismayed by the war, you can vote for someone else than Putin, or, or you cannot. Uh, you, you you can just avoid coming to the polling station, and uh, you can avoid uh, uh, voting so who, who by. Else, who, if, if you are dismayed by the war, who else can you vote for other than Putin? Uh, well, anyone else, <laughs> because uh, obviously, you know, uh, my decision was formed strangely, not by our media. Uh, sorry, not even by you, gentlemen, but by Radoslav Sikorsky. You know, Sikorsky, speaking to Atlantic Council a week ago, said, you know, uh, first he said how bad Russia was, that this country is dangerous, you know, it was us who created these anti-scientific theories that produced the anti-vaxxers, blah, blah, blah. So we need to be punished. Uh, uh, but uh, they asked him, so what would you, what, what's your immediate aim, Mr. Sikorsky? And he said, the removal of Putin. And the question was, maybe the, the Putin's success is going to be even worse. Maybe he's going to be more nationalist. He's going to be more conservative. And Sikorsky said, that's fine with me. He can be more nationalist. He can be more conservative. He will have less power. And that means he will be less of a problem for us. And, and then I asked my, myself a question. Do I want uh, this guy to have problems? Do I want him to be... Uh, facing uh, some kind of uh, resistance in his plans? And the answer is yes. <laughs> and indeed, you know, the person who can put up such resistance is Putin, you know. Uh, in that sense, Sikorsky is right. Any successor, uh, even the smartest person who replaces Putin now will have less power. So he will have less ability to, to resist. Uh, certainly, that doesn't mean that everyone in Russia, including me, supports Putin's decision to use force, uh, I mean, uh, ultimate force, uh, in February 2022. Uh, I think uh, Anatoly Levin put it very, uh, very right in one of his articles, I think, for the responsible statecraft a few months ago. He said that if you ask Russians, uh, you know, if you were standing next to President Putin on the 24th of February, you know, before... The, the fatal decision was taken. Would you agree with him? Would you support his decision to to go to war? Uh, the question may be that a huge part of that population, maybe not the majority, but many people would say, no, I, I would advise him not to do it. But if you ask people now, would you agree to uh, Russia losing the war, you know, just to lose in order to get out of this war and to stop this nightmare? Only a small minority would say yes. You know, the majority would say no. First, there but has to sorry, be... But, but, but then the question is... Yeah, sorry, sorry, Dima, but then the question is, what does losing mean? Because um, that that's... Uh, you know, there are all sorts of things that we can settle, you know, Russia, Ukraine, and the NATO can settle on, 
what would count as losing? Uh, well, there are many nuances uh, to this picture. Just like uh, I, I don't think Putin even now can answer very clearly. What does it mean to win? Does it mean that we take Kiev? Does it mean that we take Kharkov? Does it mean that Ukraine just promises not to join NATO? Uh, it's it's not clear. But uh, also it's clear what means uh, to lose. You know, if we betrayed the population of these areas, you know, the population that believed us, you know, the people in Kherson that believed us, the people at in Donetsk that believed us, if we return to their borders uh, of 1991, as uh, Zelensky is requiring, uh, if we uh, give up uh, on the demand uh, for Ukraine to be a neutral state, uh, that, that, that means to, to lose. Uh, and, and if we say, uh, I can't even imagine how that can happen, but if we say, oh, Ukrainian nationalism does not exist, Indeed, you know, that was an invention of our propaganda. <laughs> so there are many nuances to what... Uh, well, you know, uh, Dima, we, we both live here. Um, um, for a presidential election in a major country, it's needless to say, very low-key, okay? <laughs> Extremely low-key. And, and my sense is, first of all, very few people are talking about it. Um, but I think it's more of a referendum on continuity. I don't even think of it's a. I don't even think of it as a publicite on the war. I mean, the the this is the first major election cycle where uh, during the special military operation. I agree with you that. But it doesn't even seem like to me that that's on the ballot itself. I mean, at the end of the day, again, if you look at all of these Q and A's, you know, and we can, you know, even though the Tucker Carlson was a very interesting experience. But all of, you know, when he's talking to Russian media, it's about infrastructure, you know, education. I mean, there's a lot of other things going on, okay, and, and that people are, are, are unconcerned about, you know, everyday issues here. So it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me just a continuity on uh, uh, a referendum on continuity. Well, you, you are right. Uh, and in that sense, a plebiscite is a word that has many meanings. You know, Napoleon sure. the third in France in the 19th century was, I think, a classical case of that. Uh, yes, uh, he didn't have uh, an American-style election, you know, with many candidates and uh, different programs, but people supported him at least until 1870. Uh, and that was called Democratie Publicitaire in, uh, in France. Uh, and uh, to a certain extent, uh, that was better than, uh, uh, than what we have in the West now, when basically, uh, formally, you have a choice between Trump and Biden, but in reality, you don't have much of a choice. You know, th this is the same elite, uh, globalist elite, uh, which will rule whoever <laughs> wins the ballot. You know, that, 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 was the, uh, that was my prediction in 2016, and unfortunately, it came to be true. I mean, uh, the, the globalist elite might hate Trump, but when he came to power, he had either to acquiesce to what they wanted him to do, or to face some really formidable opposition, and, and basically uh, his actions were blocked. You know, in, in, in a lot of ways, he couldn't do what he wanted to do, right? So uh, in Russia, I think uh, you are right. It, it's a vote on continuity. People are asked, okay, you see, there are many difficulties. You know, uh, there is a war. Uh, it's not clear how it's going to end. It depends on you. If you want to surrender, if you want to give up, Okay, you know, uh, don't come to vote or vote for someone else. Uh, but if you uh, if you are with us, if you want us uh, to achieve uh, uh, a peace that would not be Russia's defeat, but that would, would be maybe a compromise, maybe a total victory, vote for Putin. But what this is, the, I think, the choice that people are making. But what about the other side of it, which is um, are, are there critics in Russia who are yeah. saying... Well, we're not doing enough, but, but we're, we're getting humiliated. I mean, we ev every day we read about uh, Ukrainian attacks on Russian territory, you know, Belgorod, Kursk. Then we've had the um, the ships uh, in Crimea that are regularly being attacked by Ukraine, obviously, with the assistance of the NATO powers. Um, and, and so the thing, well, we're not doing enough. We're not actually waging this war properly. We're not, you know, we're, we're, you know two years on. And we're not able to defeat a country, you know, a quarter of our size. So what about the voices of those people? Uh, these people will also participate in the election by voting 
or not voting by voting for someone else uh, than Putin. Uh, I think they can also send a message. Uh, but uh, these people are a minority in Russia. Uh, okay, uh, they have some passionate support. Uh, uh, but uh, this is the problem. You know, uh, there are groups that uh, oppose the activity of Putin for very different reasons. You know, there are people who support Girkin or Strelkov, who is now in jail, who obviously want more energetic action, who want a real war, not a special military operation. And there are people who uh, felt pity for Navalny when he died and who wanted uh, Nadezhdin. They would certainly have voted for Nadezhdin if he uh, had his candidacy. Yeah, but you know, none of these, uh, none of Putin's opponents have a nuanced position on, on the special military operation. None of them do. Well, th th this is the problem. Their position in Russia, all of these guys, their reactions, their moves are very, I would say, short term. These are knee jerk reactions. Like, I don't like war. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I also great. don't like war. Great, great. Just stop it. <laughs> or I want us to win this war. Just win it. <laughs> well, uh, unfortunately, things are not done that way, you know, in, in, in the modern world. If it had been possible to prevent the war by diplomatic means, I'm sure Putin would have done it. You know, look, uh, he was extremely patient with the West. How many years did we have an unofficial ban in Russia on, on uh, uh, you know, strong anti-Western rhetoric? Uh, the reason why Dugan and Prokhanov not very smart people, to my opinion. The reason why they are so widely quoted and revered now by some people is because they were the only ones. You know, in the 90s, they were the only ones. They were the outcasts. You know, uh, big press, big television didn't want to have them. So now, because people remember, oh, you know, they were the outcasts. They, they said things which we hear now in the 90s. That's why uh, that explains their popularity, which is undeserved, to my mind. Uh, but uh, uh, I, you're, you're very right, you know, none of them, none of these two groups, you know, the pro Girkin group or pro Navalny group, none of them suggests any uh, uh, real, realistic, uh, complicated solution to the problem. Uh, they, they are all about instincts. Well, about and also, if you, you mentioned Navalny and his elk, I mean, um, unlike the rest of the population, they did it through... Uh, they invoked uh, ethnic nationalism, which doesn't ring well here. That doesn't mean that people don't respond to that positively. And that's one of the reasons why they got picked up in the West, because the West likes those type of people to use them as a wedge. You know, Dima, you already used the, the, the two, uh, the three words, the reason why. And so, you know, when people ask me about it, I say, what is the reason why not to vote for Putin? And almost no one has an answer for me. Okay. Um, because, they, you know, and, and maybe that's a challenge to, quote, unquote, Russian democracy. M my reaction when people ask me about that, and you might not be happy to hear this, is that I'll start worrying about it when everybody else does. OK, but until then, I am not going to be waving around the flag of democracy, democracy, democracy. Um, the this is the referendum. Um, um, do, are you better off now than you were four years ago? And that's good. That's an interesting question, considering two years of, of conflict. OK. The vast majority are going to say yes. Uh, well, uh, the economy is a complicated issue. Everyone agrees that uh, very few people expected Russia to do so well as it did. But I, still, I, I, would you include yourself and myself into that category? I would. Uh, I would include myself, certainly. You know? yes. But uh, uh, it, it, it remains a fact you know, that the West just severed, severed all ties economic ties, political ties, uh, we feel very uncomfortable about it. Not because we are suddenly poorer than we were, but because we, 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 lost, we lost the usual interlocutors, you know. Yeah. We are outside our, uh, you know, European, if you want. Russia is a European country, after all. So, uh, yes, a lot of people feel uneasy about it, but uh, when they hear the guys like Radek Sikorsky, uh, of course, they start saying, oh, uh, that's not bad that we are outside his system now, you know. That system just wants to kill us. It, 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 it doesn't just reject us. It wants to destroy us. Well, right? that only wants to is. It's killing yes. Russians. But uh, you asked uh, what's the reason uh, not to vote for Putin. Well, obviously, 
a reader of the mainstream press in the West would say, look how many people were killed. You know, uh, Prigozhin, uh, Navalny, or Navalny died under very strange circumstances. Uh, so uh, don't you feel uneasy about it? I, I can tell you, I do. And, and a lot of people in Russia feel uneasy about it. But <laughs> look, this is all dwarfed by the war first, you know, because uh, hundreds of thousands of people die there, you know, uh, and, and before before uh, Putin's special operations, uh, tens of thousands of people died in Donbass, people who spoke Russian, who were exactly like us, who were us, basically, right? So that's the first one. And the second one, you have the Ukrainian government, which openly kills people on our territory, you know. Uh, just read this article in the New York Times. The, the, the Ukrainian special services there admit that they killed Daria Dugin. They killed Arsen Pavlov, you know, the hero of uh, Donbass. And they killed him during the truce, during the peacetime. Formerly it was a peacetime, and still uh, Arsen Pavlov was killed, Mikhail Tavstik was killed. They were murdered. The president of Donetsk People's Republic, Zakharchenko, was killed. He was murdered. Uh, that the Ukrainian special services have not yet admitted, but after they admitted 90% uh, of other murders, that one, you know, I, I think they will admit it pretty soon. But that raises the question, Dima, is, well, they are doing that. Um, oh, you know, states do very, very nasty things. They carry out assassinations, so, that, you know, that's a given. The question then is, well, why isn't Russia doing it? Why? Why are the Why is Ukraine carrying out assassinations on Russian territory, but Russia is not doing the same thing on Ukrainian territory? You know why? Why are you Ukrainians um, attacking? You know oil refineries on Russian territory, but Russia is not doing the same. In other words, it's going to the question of well, how does Russia then win this war? It's not good making the case. Oh, Ukrainians are doing these terrible things. Okay, that's a given. We know that they're doing terrible things. But how are you going to go ahead and and win this war? Uh, well, first you must uh, realize that this regime that we are facing in Ukraine, uh, you know, they kill people openly. You know, yes, you're, you're right. That states are doing nasty things, but uh, uh, with the Ukrainian regime now. It's in their ideology, you know, it's, it's in their origin, you know, they came to power killing people and blaming others for killing them, right? And, and, and they continue doing that. Uh, so uh, first you have to realize who is against you, and then, then we will look for ways uh, how we can prevail over these people. Uh, uh, yes, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the fighting is very hard. Difficult, you know, that the enemy is formidable, right? Uh, but uh, on the other hand, look, if we hadn't started the special military operation, Poland in the last two years, they bought 486 HIMARS systems. They bought 1,000 tanks from, uh, from South Korea. They bought 250 Abrams tanks to replace 240 Soviet tanks that they gave Ukraine. Right, so uh, little by little we're having, well, we're starting to have on our western border the strongest army in Europe, very motivated against Russia. Uh, if if it hadn't happened, you know, if we didn't start uh, the special military operation, would Poland still be militarized? I assure you, it would still be militarized. It's a bipartisan thing in Poland. Poland is ruled by two parties, you know, the civic platform and the uh, Prava is Both, uh, both support this uh, militarization of me. You know, uh, Mr. Tusk and Mr. Duda may hate each other, but, but they went to Washington, they met with Biden, and they were best friends when they discussed how they're going to, to strike Russia. So you know, Dima, I, I think- you, you said earlier, making reference to Western media and how they characterize Rus Russian politics, it always strikes me um, as pathetic is they this this constantly it's about one person it's about Vladimir Putin you know and it you know um, uh, uh, um, Putin's Russia they like to say but I say it's Russia's Putin which means something very differently um, it it shows kind of a a crass misunderstanding of uh, of uh, uh, Russian politics particularly its foreign policy because if you if you go down the route of analyzing 
what Russia de defines as its security interests, the individual Vladimir Putin is not nearly as important because those interests are timeless. They were, uh, in the, when um, we, we had um, Nicholas II, we had um, uh, um, Joseph Stalin, we had Gorbachev, which made a hash of everything. And then you have Vladimir Putin. Very different people, very different ideologies, but one thing brings them together, Russian security. Exactly, exactly. And all, but, ha uh, all hated by the West. All, all, all the hated by the West. Thank you, all George. George West. is the yeah. best wingman in the business. <laughs> but uh, I think it, uh, what you described is right, but it tells us more about Western society, about exactly, American exactly. society than about Russian uh, or any other society. This is the problem. Uh, the modern totalitarian ideology uh, of the West, when it wants to attack a certain country, you know, the Bolsheviks said, we have to attack a country because workers are suffering, you know, they're being exploited there, you know. The Nazis said, we have to attack Czechoslovakia because Germans are suffering there. We have to help the Germans. And now, now the ultra-liberals who now rule the West, when they want to attack another country, they demonize its leader. They, they, they say, okay, Iraq, that is Saddam Hussein. Nothing else, no, no one else uh, lives in Iraq, you know. If we remove Saddam Hussein, Iraq will be so much better. You know, all the problems will be solved, or almost all the problems. And, and what happened? They uh, okay, they, they arrested him, and later they basically killed him because it was not a trial; it was basically it looked more like a murder. But then it transpired that in Iraq you have uh, you have uh, Shiite militias, you have Sunni minority, which was always the dominant one. You have Kurds. And this is also complicated. <laughs> but before we were told that uh, basically there's only one person making politics in Iraq, that's Saddam Hussein. Uh, I assure you, there is not a single country in the world, but just one person makes all the politics. This is an invention of, uh, of uh, uh, I'm sorry, Western propaganda. And it's so, an old invention. You know, the so Decembrists in Russia said that there is only one person making politics in, 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 in Russia, Alexander I, or Nicholas I. That wasn't true. That was simply not true. That's why they lost. Okay. So, so Dima, what happens after the um, election? Do you think that Russia will make some kind of either, well, you can say that they're going to launch some sort of a um, major military operation, or do you think that they will un undertake some major diplomatic initiative, which, you know, you can say, you know, it'll entail a loss for Russia or whatever. But, you know, that in other words, some major change in policy will follow the election. Or do you think it's just, we'll just continue as before? I think it will, uh, to a certain extent, depend on the West. Uh, again, I, I took today a part in a discussion with Anatoly Levin, where he said a very wise thing. He said that basically, if uh, the West offered Russia some kind of a compromise piece, some kind of a way out. Uh, the Russian elite and uh, maybe a certain part of the Russian population, maybe a huge part of the Russian population, would have agreed because uh, what's going on is a nightmare. And not only for Ukrainians. Yeah, but but Dima, for I'm Russia. sorry to interrupt, but that, that you know, again, that that's that, that's a typical responsible statecraft speak. Okay, yeah. Russia, you know, um, give Russia a way out. No, the the West is desperate. It's panicking right now. Okay, mm -hmm. they're the ones it's that need true. a way out. Okay, that, that that again, this is just this Western framing all of the time. Okay, who's panicking here? It's not the well, Russian side. <laughs> is I think the West is panicking. Uh, you're right, but uh, this is the problem. These people panic, but they don't know how to ask. <laughs> they don't know how to say, I'm sorry. They don't know how to say, I made something wrong. Let's do it the other way. Uh, this is a well, very... I mean, Dima, there's, one ideology. Thing, there's one thing they could do, okay? And it, it'll be no. a bitter pill for them to swallow, but it's on the table. It's been on the table from the very beginning. We need someone in the West of some gravitas to say, we need a new European security order to avoid this happening again. Does anybody have the guts to say that? It's, no, well, it's not going to happen. It, it just ain't yeah. going to happen. I mean, that cannot happen. But George, but George, that is the way out. Well, that is a way out, but, you know, it's just not, it's not a realistic way out. I mean, it's just not on the cards. Again, I'm sure after this election, we're going to hear a lot from the West how bad it is when you have just one person 
taking decisions, uh, you know, the dictatorship of one person. I can tell you uh, that is not nice, one person taking decisions. But the dictatorship of an ideology is a lot worse <laughs> because an ideology doesn't have fear or pity, you know. It just requires a victory. And if there is no victory, it doesn't take bitter pills. It makes the population take bitter pills. The ideology just stands aside, you know, just like with Iraq. You know, we didn't have Mr. Obama or, or, or Biden saying, oh, we made a mistake. Oh, that was uh, too bad, you know. They, they say, okay, you know, we are withdrawing troops, we are changing policies. Well, but they, they always never say they... They, they always say they won. Okay. I mean, you can ask yeah. the neocons inside the bell. Well, yeah, we won in Iraq. Of course we did. I mean, that, yeah. that's it. I mean, it's interesting you bring up that point. You know, one man making a decision. Well, who is making the decisions in Washington? Can you name the one man for me? Nobody can. It, it's, it's, it's because the it's the ideology. I'm agreeing with you. It's the ideology, yes. And, uh, and uh, uh, you're right that basically uh, uh, these people, uh, this system, uh, does not have a back pedal, you know, <laughs> does not have a reverse. Uh, it cannot be operated in a reverse mode. It can only move forward, you know, because it is supposed to be right and it is supposed to win, you know. Uh, so uh, we are in a very dangerous situation because, uh, uh, you know, uh, the only way uh, Mr. Macron and others are going to progress, I think, is to raise the stakes. Uh, this is the only thing that they can suggest without uh, putting their careers in danger. Just more weapons, you know. We can't allow Russia to win. We can't allow Ukraine to win. Dima, they, 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 we had the, depart, uh, the impending departure of Victoria Nuland. Uh, in the Russian side, what, what, what is the talk that you've heard that people explaining her, uh, either she, was, uh, she quit or she was pushed? I mean, what, what are the circles in Moscow saying? Well, that's interesting. You know, people noticed that she was not very successful. I mean, uh, her well, latest that's an mission understatement. was yeah, <laughs> her latest mission was in, in in Ukraine. She was supposed to uh, somehow reconcile uh, uh, Zelensky and Zavuzhny, and she failed. Right then, before that, she was supposed to come to Africa. Right, uh, I think to Niger, and to uh, negotiate. Uh, some kind of a settlement there, and she failed, right? Uh, so uh, I think what happened, uh, again, this ideology, it never admits its mistakes. You know, the system never makes mistakes. Like, uh, you know, Tony Blair said, I think in 2006 or 2007, oh, uh, you know, Iraq is so, is so much a better place without Saddam Hussein. And he said it on the day when 200 people died. In a terrorist attack, right? <laughs> and even but, the but the thing is that attack. you know you have to sort of see things from the uh, the view of the West. As far as the West is concerned, this policy in Ukraine is not a failure. Russians are dying. Yeah. I mean, they've said it over and over well, again. Uh, Russians are dying. George, no, maybe that's terrible. Maybe but, just but again, a little bit. Again, hey, hang on, hang on. Maybe just a slight nuance there. It's good for the United States, not necessarily right. for the West. Okay, Europe right. is hurting. No, okay. For the United, the United States, States, yes, I agree but, with you. But, but the Europeans have, however, bought into it. I mean, the, the, the Europeans have not in any way distanced themselves and said, well, we have our own distinctive policy and, uh, and it's not in our interest to follow the Americans' lead. In fact, they are the ones now doubling down. I mean, Macron has now raised the stakes. He's gone further than any American has said. Well, this is an existential matter for Europe. If Putin I, wins, I, he's not going to stop there and so on. So this is now the European position. That's Macron. The British are saying the same thing. Poland is saying the same thing. You now have this European consensus. We need to send in our own people, not just weapons. We need to send in our own people. And do it. Then do it. Yeah. Do it. yeah. All right. Well, well, I, I pretty much have to wrap it up pretty soon now. Okay. But I, I wanted to say this, you know, I think it's important because uh, what we can do is to come to certain conclusions, you know, in our discussion. I think the system in the West, it can punish a person, you know. Uh, what happened in Ukraine, the fact that they're losing, you know, they, they can blame Victoria Nuland for that. Maybe they will even say, oh, what she did on Maidan was wrong, right? Uh, they blame Hillary Clinton for losing to Trump. They don't blame themselves. They don't blame the system. They don't blame the ideology. They always blame the person. So that person can be removed like Victoria. 
he or she may be forgotten, like so many politicians. Oh no, she's going to be right? a she's yeah. going to be a, a professor at uh, Columbia yeah, but, University. But oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the system yeah. is impactful. The system uh, never. Well, does it, Dima? I know you have to go, but it, it kind of reminds me is that you know the party's never wrong, but individual members make mistakes. The the party, the yeah, the, the Communist yeah. Party. I don't know. Is Dima frozen? I think he's McConnelling. Okay. All righty. It's frozen. okay. We I know, oh, you're, okay. Okay. I know you're back. Okay. It's you were McConnelling. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay. I know you need to wrap it up, Dima. Thank you yeah. very much for joining us and talking yeah. about this. And if there's any sudden um, okay. um outcome, I already have we'll, to we'll talk to you. Thanks. All right. Thank, Thank you so Thanks much, Dima. Very nice okay. conversation. Okay. And okay. Talk to you Thank soon. you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Peter, do you want to just hang on for a bit? Yeah. yeah.